Hello and welcome to the second DC Comics News Podcast of 2024. This is episode 189. I'm Steve J. Ray and with me is BF, one of my BFs, Brad Felicki. How are you doing, brother? Hey, Steve, I'm doing good. Always good Glad. to see you. Always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend, especially about good nerdy things like what's happening in the world of DC, movie, TV, comics and other news too this week so let's start with the big screen and uh this is a bit of a weird story and one i hadn't heard that um there were talks between the writer of batman returns and the famed tim burton about making a michelle pfeiffer catwoman movie but um this one went in all kinds of directions what do you make of this incredible story uh you know i uh i think i like tim burton's idea better yeah that, you know, it was crazy kind of black and white very tim worry i think that would have worked out better than mm. what was described as the other idea which was the boys before the boys and i'm not sure in a catwoman context how that would how that would work i think I, the black and white idea appeals to me more um and I, I, it makes me wonder like back in 1990 i guess that would have come out probably at that point 94 how audiences would have taken a black and white superhero movie. I think they would be more um, accepting of it these days than they would back then. So that's an interesting concept. But either way, I think any of those ideas would have been better than the uh, the Catwoman movie that we got. All respect to Halle Berry, but you know, I don't, you know. So that's I hard I, to I, argue with that. Yeah, yeah. So what, what about you? Um, well, the idea of I mean, have you seen Cat People? The original black and white yeah, noir. I did, and not and not that long ago, actually. Just uh, during uh, the t- tail end of COVID, I actually watched it. It's so a it great it. film. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and very Tim Burton. I mean, if they'd have gone down that route, and especially with the way that Batman Returns portrayed Selina as being brought back to life and possibly having nine lives due to being resuscitated by the cats, that would have made for a fascinating concept. But like you said, even Batman Returns did not do well at the box office because it was so radical and dark and, and almost a horror movie in places obviously but now it's a cult classic it's a different take on batman which daniel waters said the screenwriter that nowadays as there's so much batman content you can pick and choose what you like make it an elseworld make it whatever canon in your head so that would have been fascinating but i still think that back in those days obviously everyone goes on about the boys and personally i think it's hugely overrated because comics like uh, martial law and new statesman did that 30 years previously and they did it better without the having to resort to the shock values and the over sexualized characterization and i think the boys i read the comics and wasn't really interested in the tv show whereas um this back then again may not have worked you're right it would have been a bit too radical of having catwoman dealing with superheroes who are actually nasty but we ended up getting that in suicide squad of, in, in that era as well so in the comics so, so maybe it would have worked but seeing a black and white tim burton film after all the other things he's done uh the halloween movies the franken um also oh, the, the, the dog I can't remember franken puppy yeah franken weenie that's it franken weenie um that would have been fascinating so but instead we got patience phillips who looked fantastic because halle berry but damn that film really wow not one I'd ever watch again, personally, even with Halle Berry. Yeah. But don't get um, on that costume. Ugh. Oh man! But um, Michelle Pfeiffer. I mean, we have to speak about her role in Batman Returns. She was arguably the best thing in the whole film. I mean, even to the point where she trained herself with whip. I mean, did you know that that whole scene where she whips the mannequins' heads off was a, a full take that she re- re- uh, recorded, and that's actually online unedited that people can see so that's how seriously she took that role it would have been amazing to see her back i think her performance turned out to be one of the most iconic out of the entire absolutely yeah you know her and the joker in fact you know you still see graphic tees and Mm. posters with her as catwoman and in fact oh and sideshow prints the works figures and in fact the new ted series that came out based on um, the Ted movies, the teddy bear movies. In one of the episodes, 
one of the characters goes dressed in Halloween as Catwoman. Oh, wow. Now, granted, it takes place in the 90s, but so that makes sense. But it still shows yeah. how lasting oh, absolutely look for the character was. It's permeated popular Comic culture. General. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you being our fashion guru, we have to do that costume, that whole look, even though they even said it in the article, they veer wildly from the comic book source material. It was a fascinating take, and that costume is iconic, legendary. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so going from cult classics and what could have been, let's talk about something we know is definitely coming, and I love Todd Phillips. Rather than let sources leak pictures, he posts them himself. And we've got some great new ones of both Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga on set as Harleen Quinzel and um, Arthur Fleck, the Joker, in new posts that he's put online. Great pictures, I think. And again, getting us excited for Joker Folia 2. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting more and more excited. These pictures were good. Uh, Joker in looks like an Arkham cell looking out small window in the cell and another picture of Harley Quinn or Harley Quinzel at that point looking at Joker and as the caption under the picture said falling in love so I I think that her I think Lady Gaga's performance is going to surprise a lot of people um, there's just something in her presentation her persona her body language even in those pictures that translates well so i'm looking forward to seeing what she does with the role for sure uh, what about you for me she is one of the very few um musical artists to really show that she can cross that barrier and act her performance in house of gucci was remarkable i mean the whole film was great but i also want to talk about what you said about todd phillips and his artistry and obviously his uh Director of photography in these films is is so brilliant. The way that shot with Arthur Fleck in the cell is framed, where it's all cell, and if you don't look, you don't even see that his face is there in one of the panels, and, and it's haunting. It's brilliant, and like you said, that look that Gaga gives Joker because he's in full Joker makeup, and she isn't at this point. You can sense longing, love confusion understanding wanting to understand more in that one look and it, it's it's superbly framed and her, her facial expression is brilliant and like you said when you get two people who have got that on-screen charisma if they've got chemistry as well they could really um give us a new joker and harley for a new generation as long as again harley escapes whatever that relationship becomes, if it goes the same way it did in the animated series and the comic books, because this film has, with Todd Phillips still at the reins, the potential to be every bit as good as the original, and that's a rarity with sequels, but um, not so much with comic book sequels. Sometimes the second film's better than the first, so yeah, excited and very, very hopeful, even with the weird musical angle thrown in, which I'm still 50-50 about, but hey, let, let's see what happens. You know, I think people maybe be reading, might be reading too much into the musical part of this. Mm. I think that at the very least, it's going to be very creative in how they do it. And it's not just going to be people breaking into songs. It, um, I go back to Dancer in the Dark, if you've ever seen that with Bjork, where she fantasizes mm. about the musical numbers and things like that and how it weaves in. And I, I, I kind of have a feeling, too, that there might not be too many songs <laughs> either. I think it might be very specific. So that's my impression at this point. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We see a trailer and more footage. So that's 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 my impression at this point. I think. Yeah, I'm seeing that um, the way in the first film he totally imagines that romance with Daisy Beats character is perhaps how Harleen initially fantasizes about the joker character and then that's when she decides to make the turn and become harley quinn so there's so many ways it could go in either way it's it's going to be a great watch i think so let's go from live action to dc's most recent animated launch which is phenomenal and the sequel which has a trailer featuring 
Lo and behold, someone who didn't even exist during the original Crisis on Infinite Earths comic book run, Terry McGuinness's Batman Beyond. Now, this has me super hyped. What about you? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Um, I, I think the the last few Batman Beyond um, miniseries that came out sold more and more successful than people realized. They realized that there's still a love for the character. Uh, there was a lot of reaction when it went on when Batman Beyond went on streaming again uh, a few years ago. So I think there's still a lot of love out there, and there's a lot of people who got into comics and were still part of this whole thing because of that era of animation and that character. They loved that series, and it makes sense um, with a Crisis on Infinite Earths animated to bring in those animated characters, and it and it is going along with kind of DC's ways to tie everything together in ways. So I think it's I think it's very smart and I think people are going to be really happy to see the character back. Well, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we wouldn't have hot talents like Sean Murphy writing and drawing comics cuz he's clearly stated that he came into Batman through the animated series Batman Beyond and the Tim Burton movies, not through comics at all. Hence he uh, mistakenly made Jason Todd the first Robin in his in his books, but having terry mcginnis back because the one thing i remember about batman beyond first of all when it first launched because obviously i was already an adult then was thinking hey what a new batman in the future no only bruce wayne should be batman three or four episodes into the animated series I thought, damn this kid's good this kid could be after dick grayson and tim drake the only person who should be batman when bruce retires i love that show from beginning to end i wasn't a big fan of uh, return of the joker movie because of the way they t- treated tim drake but obviously tim drake was a new character then we did not know what he would become how iconic he would be how he would become batman's chosen to take over in the future batman said if anyone's going to be batman in the future it's you you're the detective of the family um so seeing him back again and that iconic black costume with a red bat side by side with the legends of the DC universe. Um, it's a great update. Have you seen part one yet of Crisis on Infinite Earths? I've not yet. Oh, you're going to love it. Yet. Yeah. You're going to love it. I'm, I'm, I'm it's, um, obviously, they've changed a lot. They've updated a lot, but they had to. But it works. And it's really made me want to read the 12 issues again. So I'm going to have to read the 12 issues again. Um, it's that simple but yes yeah, seeing terry mcginnis back um is a treat and i can't wait to see how he's used because um even in the original comics obviously you've read crisis we know that the future the past the present and every world was affected by the antimatter antimatter wave so having that um it just makes sense because we had dinosaurs in the present in the original comics so having terry mcginnis here just makes sense to me and starting the new phase of the animated universe with these films is just a genius idea. Really happy about it. Yep. Right, so let's go from big screen to small screen. And the first of our TV news reports is, and this surprised me greatly, a Matt Reeves Arkham series is actually part of the main DCU and not part of the universe from the Batman. What did you make of this story? You know, I don't know what to think about it. Um, I think what it means is that it's way down the line at this point then it's not as close to getting made as we would hope because right now the Matt Reeves Batman world is still really hot. People are talking about it. People are excited about the Penguin series. I don't see the point in not in making it part of the James Gunn version unless, you know, I, I maybe they're just a little nervous on how to bring Batman into that world because batman is dc's cash cow i mean nothing more popular than batman anything else in dc can go away and you'd still have batman to make money so they have to be careful with that so maybe they're trying to ease audiences in to a gotham that's part of that james gunn dceu but i it it seems like uh i don't know it seems like an odd an odd choice um yeah, this this James Gunn world is going to be very interesting. I'm very curious. I, I'm really anxious to see some footage and actually get a release date for you know, Creature Commando so we can get like our first taste of what. Oh this yes, is you know, I'm 
I'm just, we're just trying to kind of, you know, we're just speculating at this point. But yeah, I'm not sure why, why they would do that. It seems a little counterintuitive to me. Uh, what about you? I agreed, especially the way that the first Batman movie ended with Joker and Riddler in Arkham talking. And I could see that blossoming out in so many ways, especially with Batman 2 on the horizon end of this year and the teaser poster showing a possible appearance by Hush and whatever else may be happening with that film. But I, mean, I do like that they're separate because they feel very different to what we've seen so far in James Gunn's The Suicide Squad and the brilliant Peacemaker TV show. So I can kind of see it, but it felt more like an actual progression from the Batman than it would as an intro or part of James Gunn's DC universe. So exactly. that was a bit fun. Because yeah. if you look at the casting of the characters of mm. James Gunn's movies, all signs point to it feeling like a James Gunn movie. He's not, yeah. he doesn't seem to be veering from his, his tone uh, or style. And this series seemed to be in line more with that Matt Reeves world and more mm -hmm. influenced by the, the Gotham PD series, the Greg Rucka series that was yeah. so good, but that was definitely not a James Gunn as mm -hmm. series. So, yeah, I yeah, I agree. So maybe that's what we were talking about when James Gunn and Peter Safran were announced as the new heads of the DCU, that perhaps having a James Gunn centric DC universe wouldn't work because I know there are certain people who still think that he's a bit too funny, popcorn, bubblegum, shock value to run the DC universe. So having a more grounded TV show run by someone like Matt Reeves as part of the main DC universe is a way of James Gunn saying, Listen, I'm not the power hungry um monster you think i am i want great artists to tell great stories so to me that's the way i'm going to look at it to see that he's prepared to have a wider richer deeper dcu than perhaps some more cynical fans are expecting so i'm going to look at it with that glass glasses half full kind of perspective yeah so maybe that's that's the way to look at it yeah. now this one you know I'm really excited about because when it was first touted for Max, which we don't have in Europe or the UK, um, the Batman Cape Crusader animated series had me really excited. Then it was seemed like it was dropped, but now we know for sure it's written. It's partly or almost completely filmed and it's coming to prime. But Ed Brubaker, wonderful writer, has said that it will differ from Batman the Animated Series in a few key ways. Now, I'm actually quite um, psyched about this. What do you make of it? Yeah, I am too. Um, people, I think one of the the appeal and, and why it still is so popular with people, the Batman Animated Series, is that it was a little gritty. It, 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 um, it didn't insult oh, yeah. the viewer's intelligence. And by judging by what Ed Brubaker is saying, this new series is going to even be more of that. So, um, you know, and, and the article points it out. He says uh, you're going to see a lot of people getting punched on screen. But I kind of felt that you did with the Batman animated series, too. And the article points that out. So, you know, that's that's going to be interesting. I, I can tell you right now, I love the designs of the characters so far, and oh, yeah. look at what we've seen. So I think, I, I think in a year where we're not getting a whole lot of um, on-screen superhero content, you know, there's not going to be, there's only going to be the Joker movie as far as DC goes. There's just going to be the Sony Marvel movies, and doesn't you know the, you might see a little more TV, but I think this might be one of the shining lights of superhero on the screen this year you know fingers crossed so, yeah i think i think we're in for a treat well put it this way when you add brew baker to the list of names like alan burnett paul dini and bruce yeah. tim you just know that at least the writing is going to be pure class. These are all stellar writers and Brood Baker's hard boiled noir detective style works. He's written some great Batman tales in the past. So I think what he's saying though isn't just that you can see more punches in the face. We're going to see, like he said as well in the article, more of what Paul Dini and Bruce Tim wanted to put on screen, but weren't allowed to by network censors. When it's streaming, some of the gloves are off, and we've talked about this several times about other shows and movies. What I'm thinking is 
we're going to see blood spatters. We're going to see violence. We may finally see in animation um, the death of the Waynes. But like you said, again, your eye, Captain Fashion, I love you. Those character designs. I've always been more of a long ears Batman fan than the stubby ears Batman fan. And that whole look, which harkens back both to his original appearances in detective comics back in the 30s and 40s, to also that Kelly Jones look, that spooky figure of the night. I mean, that silhouette with the little ears isn't that frightening. But when you see a giant bat coming at you, even just in shadow with a cape splayed, that to me is Batman. That's the Batman that I grew up with, the Batman that turned me away from the safe, friendly Adam West Batman that got me into the character in the first place to the real Batman, the Batman who was a figure of the night and a figure of terror to criminals. So, yeah, I'm so hyped. And the fact it's on Prime is such a huge plus. So we can all see it when it comes out and talk about it when it comes out. And, hey, you and I have the best conversations in the world. So talking about that show will just add to that. Can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Really yeah, excited. I'll have, like, a spoiler podcast about it once some or maybe now that um it seems like harley quinn podcast mad loves on hiatus maybe you and i can uh throw that into the ring for the dc comics yeah. news gang and have a batman cape crusader cast yeah. so yeah. let's see what happens but either way i'm all on board hey it's batman i'm there i mean just look at the hat <laughs> right so let's talk about the thing that started it all the thing you and I love most of all, without which we wouldn't have the TV shows or the movies, let's talk comics. And let's start with a lighter side of comics. With April coming and April Fools, how about something that's going to send the entire DC Universe ape, including banana-scented comic book covers? Hmm. I think I'm losing my marbles and going bananas. What about you, Brad? I think I know what I want for my birthday. <laughs> my birthday's in April. I think I want this. <laughs> yes. The funny thing is, I just reading this. I just keep kept thinking to myself, okay, so everything that tastes like banana tastes the same, but it doesn't taste like banana. So, is this smell going to be how that tastes? So it doesn't really like banana. I'm just curious. It's not going to smell like real bananas. It's going to smell like banana ice cream, banana milkshake, and everything that doesn't actually yeah. taste like bananas. Yeah. Yep, uh, but I think it's a it's a funny concept and a a funny idea. I think that um, I think it's something that will get collectors into shops. I think it'll be a it's a it's a nice little gimmick, I guess. And it's a funny the whole ape ape role is kind of a a pretty funny concept anyway. So you know I'm on board. <laughs> as soon as you talk to me about dc's ape villains and ape characters i just get happy because again it's my childhood it's what i grew up with and when you see that there's going to be an ape version of the justice league the jungle league i mean again i'm in and then you add things like i mean those covers and the cover artists they've got doing them and a banana scented cover i think i feel more sorry for the comic book retailers what's that going to make their stores smell like um are they going to come in sealed bags that you can't smell until you pull it out of the bag? And is it going to be a scratch and sniff type thing? I don't know, but it's fun. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. It's going to be fun. Because like you said, people say DC comics aren't fun. They're too dark, blah, blah, blah. Clearly don't read them. Read this. Obviously, they haven't read Jurassic League. No. no. There yeah. you go. There you go. And uh, they clearly don't read Nightwing. Yeah. There's some great fun comics out there. Blue Beetle. Um, so much for everyone. People read DC Comics. Don't just talk about them like you read them when you don't read them. They're fantastic. So, yeah, um, looking forward to this. Um, April will be uh, amazing. And if it's not, we can just get the baby monkeys to sleep in the ape records. I'm sorry. I'll get my coat. Um, the other comics news story you have is a little bit more serious and fascinating. And then as soon as you add Mike and Laura Allred to the mix, whose artwork I adore again, it's so now, but so reminiscent of the classics telling a Batman origin story that ties in with real historical events. Damn it, DC, take my money. What do you think about this amazing sounding Batman, the dark age series? 
yeah, I'm I'm excited. I love that it's a spiritual successor to Space Age. Space Age was a lot of fun, uh, and I'd like I you know I'd like to see them continue on. Maybe do a Flash series, a Green Lantern series. Oh, Green awesome! All those characters. If if obviously Space Age did well enough to continue, and you know it's Batman, so I'm sure it's going to do well and just to keep continuing. Um, maybe you can have that be something that's as popular as you know you mentioned Sean Murphy that the White Knight world as well i think yeah i'm i'm all for it and and all red's style is just perfect for for that kind of exploration um into the character's past because it has that classic feel but still also feels a little modern yeah i think it, it, it's you, you can't lose consummate storytelling that's what i love about these guys they're just real artists and the way they frame a story is just a beautiful thing to look at but what i loved about space age and a lot of people didn't get that series was like what's the point of this was that was probably superman's most popular era the silver age with the wacky science going on and what was going on in the 50s that was just great stuff to read and the fact they're going back to what looks like the golden age which was arguably batman's greatest era before the modern era to me just makes sense it's when the characters were taking over the world when they were just at their peak and tying that into the space age with superman tying it into real historical events with batman it just makes for fascinating reading and something different like you said batman is probably dc's cash cow he's his most popular character love him or hate him whether you think he's oversaturated or overused or not the fact that you can tell these kind of stories with that character just means the fan wins we just get more content that's different and how can you say that about a character that this year turns 85? That's just just mind-blowing to me. So, again, as a Batman fan, I am all in for this one. Really excited. Now, let's talk about other news and something close to your heart, even though I know you're not that big a fan of the multiplayer games, but Rocksteady have actually spoken out now about why they've gone down a Suicide Squad movie featuring the Justice League, Suicide Squad game, rather, featuring the Justice League rather than an all-out Justice League game. And their um, comments make sense to me. As, as a gamer, what did you make about this? Yeah, I, I think the concept makes sense because generally the Suicide Squad is is underpowered when it would come to something like the Justice League. So in a video game context, you can have the Justice League set up as boss battles. So you could hypothetically do levels, and then maybe the last levels when you would defeat Superman. Or maybe if they wanted to switch it up, they could the last level, Batman would be the most powerful boss. Um, and so I, I, I get that. I I'm still curious though how they're going to integrate the gameplay how is this going to work because given what they said that these because they are more powerful and it presents a challenge that's great but i'm still curious on how you're going to get to those how you're going to get to those fights um what is that single player experience going to be um you know i, I could see I, I you know my my way i envision it like i said with the levels and the different Justice League characters being a boss at each level, say, that would still work very well as a single-player game. But when you have the Suicide Squad, how would you integrate that? Would you say one one Suicide Squad member per level, or would you could you play every level with a different member and try to beat it? I mean, there's fun ways that you could do that. I just don't. I'm, I'm still a little leery on how they're going to do the multiplayer aspect of all this. I really want a good single player partially because yes i like single player games and second rocksteady created some of the best single player games with the arkham games and why oh, you that. something you know and do so well why would you you know i guess there's a if it's not broke don't try to fix it but then you can't grow so we'll see you know we'll see what happens um i uh, i think i i right now i believe it's coming out February 22nd, so um, you don't have that long to wait for people to get their hands on it and reviews to come out and you know videos to be posted to see how this game plays. So 
Uh, so we'll see. I really want it to be good because I'm I'm really looking forward to it because I I love Rocksteady. So um, I'm hoping I'm hoping that they can pull it off. Hopefully, it won't get pushed back again because we've had a couple of those issues but let's see but what about the comments obviously this is why i love talking to you about video games as i'm not a gamer myself about how the people who do love collaboration games and playing online as a community love the whole um camaraderie aspect or having a dig having a having fun with your friends and that whole side of it where the suicide squad are famous for that in the comics they're always pushing each other's buttons and getting on each other's nerves and trying to outdo each other that could be a real fun part of playing the game do you see do you understand that a bit more now that they've come out and gone on the record saying that yes um i i i have had some decent multiplayer experiences randomly most of the time playing destiny where i would be kind of stuck and then out of the blue somebody would just pop in and help me out and that would kind of be fun in oh that's cool suicide squad you know if you're playing and then somebody can pop in i would much more appreciate a collaborative effort than competition because because i'm you know honestly i'm not that great at video games so it, when i play a game i like to take it slow dissect it and play it your way and, it's, and and it's my pace and if you're playing with multiplayer you get kind of sucked in and then a lot of times you get left behind and video games are such a time sink i don't have time to sit there and spend hours getting good enough to go into a multiplayer match when even there's other games that I w- would want to play beyond anything else in my life. You know, I don't want to spend, you know, over time on one particular game because I want to try to get in and play a lot. So um, it's just really hard for me to to get behind a fully multiplayer experience as much as I, I want to. But I, I do think that there's going to be some room in there for um, for fun experiences. Like you said, pushing each other's buttons, that could be that could be a lot of fun, especially if, if you have um, real friends a lot playing. where you can play with somebody right beside you, like the old Nintendo days, things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's why that's one reason why I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, people stream the game and, and seeing people actually play the game to see uh, how it plays and, and what the experience people are having with it once it comes out. Maybe now's the time for you to create the DC Comics News Gamer Group. Oh, yeah. Just saying. Yeah. If it's all buddies or people who are into it, you can collaborate and maybe kick the Justice League's ass in record time. So yeah. who knows? If anyone can do it, Brad can. <laughs> That's what I think. I appreciate that. <laughs> so now let's close the show with our final other news item. And we've said it before. If we had the money and we had the space, Sideshow Collectibles could possibly take over our lives. They've just launched a brand new Batman 2.0 figure featuring the Ben Affleck version of Batman. And damn, this action figure is just a thing of absolute beauty. I mean, my mind's blown. Um, What did you make of this incredible piece of art? I just love all the choices you have. As far as how you want to display it, there's different hands, fists, different faces, and some of those pictures of those those faces, that sculpting looks almost Incredible. like incredible. It's I don't know how they do it, and it's so it's no wonder that you get such a hefty price tag with these statues because it's just above and beyond. Like we say about like I think the you know. Sideshow with the statues, McFarlane with the action figures. There's just that is the state of the art, the actual the apex of all that stuff. And this this statue is just an example of that. And I kind of like just in general that they felt that there would be enough demand for the Ben Affleck Batman to make a statue this detailed. You know, I I, I kind of like that because I think he gets. And all the brouhaha that happened after, I think he gets he gets overlooked. And I still would have liked to have seen. Him I'm a Batfleck fan. Yeah, yeah. So 
I, I in, in a sense, I just like that it exists. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, this is much more than a statue. It actually, to all intents and purposes, is an action figure, but like the most complex, um, beautiful, well-made action figure I have ever seen. The fact that you can pose it any way you like. The deluxe version, you can even pose the cape because it's got wires in it. When he's in his Batman mask, you've got three different mouths and expressions you can change over. Two different unmasked faces with two different hairstyles. Different hands to hold different gadgets or just fists for the fighting. The attention to, like you said, the design, the sculpting, the fully hand-painted faces. I can't afford these things, but damn if I could, this could be the one thing I bought because it is spectacular. And when you see that it's handcrafted in this way with a real cloth costume, a real cloth cape, changeable features, it makes the price tag almost worth it. So that for people who do collect these and can afford them, all I can say is I'm jealous, I'm envious, because these 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 are works of art. They might be toys, they might be statues, whatever. They might just be collectibles you put on the shelf and never touch, you just look at. But they're stunning. And the amount of artistry, love and care that's gone into making them, you can't take that away. You cannot take that away. When you get some of the stuff we grew up with, the Mego toys, which we loved, compared to this, it's like comparing Steamboat Willie to... Um, Fantasia, you you just can't make that comparison. And when you get artistry like this, it just makes fans like me just think, "Damn, that is cool." Yeah, yeah, it really. I you know there is so many choices on how you could display mm. it. I don't even know. I, I I wouldn't even know where to begin. I, absolutely. They even sculpt the, like you know, pose the cape, I and mean, that's crazy. I mean, the fact that you're supposed to keep these things in the box, I couldn't do it. I would yeah. play with this thing like crazy. I'd move it. I'd pose it. I'd stick it on a bookshelf. I'd stick it near a Batmobile. I'd stick it near my Batman model. I'd just move him all over the place. And it's just amazing. Guys, check out SciShow Collectibles' new Batman 2.0 figure on their website or go to Dark Knight News and search Batman 2.0 because this thing is sick it's amazing yeah yep yeah, absolutely. absolutely so that's yeah. it that's it we talked all the news we had on the list so brad as always bff bf brad for Licky. love talking to you brother but hey people out there need to hear you need to see you need to read your work where can they do that uh, you can find me uh writing news reviews dccomicsnews.com find me on this podcast um, i also occasionally do some reviews for josh's our editors um merc with the movie blog site uh so and you can also follow me on x or twitter or whatever you want to call it now at flicky v1 though i don't post a lot because of um well my personal feelings about <laughs> that platform but you can follow me there if you'd like and I guess real quick, I want to give a shout out to, it's DC adjacent, uh, our friends at Reebok, they had that really cool DC collaboration. So cool. And they are back with a cool collaboration oh, with wow. uh, Global Citizen. And I bring this up just because Global Citizen is a really cool organization. He really uh, is. Fighting global poverty. So any of this Reebok stuff that you get, for Global Citizen will help to a really good cause. So I just thought I would um, give them, give our friends at Reebok a quick little shout out and uh, Global Citizen a little shout out. And, hey. where people, and where can people find you? First of all, let me just say kudos. That was beautiful. And when it comes to apparel, listeners, viewers, when it comes to fashion, when it comes to knowing how people should look at what they should be wearing, this is the man to listen to. Yeah? You heard it here first. Great, great cause great clothes awesome thanks brad as for me yeah just the usual go to google type in steve j ray type in fantastic universes type in steve j ray's fantastic universe and you can read all my news reviews features and interviews across dc comics news dark Knight news and my baby my own website fantastic universes you can hear my dulcet tones on this wonderful show with amazing people like brad and um hey 
Listen out to Fantastic Universes. We're launching our YouTube channel soon and a brand new podcast, Detective Comments, the Batman podcast, where we will delve into the various aspects, the history, the character of arguably the greatest superhero of all time, Batman the Dark Knight. So listen out for that and look out for it on YouTube as well. But until you do, the one thing everyone out there needs to be doing is to read more comics because we love them take care that was dc comics news episode 189 see you soon